Okay, our next 1000 point conflict in the Crusade, and its ritual. High Fleet Leviathan for transhuman on synapse, and mini transhuman on non synapse, and a single dice reroll for each unit in both shooting and melee. I haven't used the former once as of yet. The new improved toughness of the Tyranids means the Ultramarines just don't throw out enough damage to get better than a 4 up to wound. But my opponent is switching out to heavier fellows for this game, so we'll see. Still sticking with the Prime as my Warlord, he has a Venom Cannon, the Reaper of Obliterax, and a Warlord trait of Synaptic Tendrils, so it can use its Alpha Warrior to reroll wound rolls of a 1 and use it twice. He is bloodied and has Armoured Biomorph for an extra point of toughness. He'll be embedded with a unit of 6 Tyranid Warriors with dual Bone Swords for the extra attack. Two of them will be spending 5 points each for Venom Cannon, and the rest have Death Spitters, and my few leftover points I'm going with Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands. The Warriors are Battle Hardened, and their battle traits are Veteran Warriors for re-rolling ones to hit, and Fleet of Foot for plus one move, which I completely forgot to note on their stats, and so didn't apply it to the entire battle. There will also be a three warrior objective holding squad with two warriors with dual bone swords and death spitters and one with a venom cannon. These became bloodied last game and are veteran warriors for the re-rolling ones to hit. The Neurothrope has the Warlord trait of direct guidance to give a unit plus one to hit and the Resonance Barb Relic. It is bloodied and has tactical experience for regaining a spent command point on a roll of a six. From the assassination mission we played, it also gained the trait of psychic might for an extra manifested power. It knows catalyst, onslaught, and paroxysm, and the leviathan power of hive nexus. Three Venomthrope that are also bloodied, and they have instinctive autonomy to increase synapse to 18 inches instead of 6, because I like sending them forward to snag and bog down the foe, their grasping tendrils stopping them from falling back, which Ultramarines like to do. They are also grizzled for a 6 up to ignore a wound loss. The Hive Tyrant has a Venom Cannon, Monstrous Bone Sword, and Lash Whip, and has the Warlord trait of Adaptive Biology for a 5-up save on any lost wound. It is bloodied, so it has Armoured Biomorph for plus 1 toughness. In addition to Hive Nexus, this big bug knows Catalyst and Paroxysm. But these are backups, in case it gets out of range of the Neurothrope and needs to cast them on itself while it is deep in enemy lines. Until then, it'll be chucking out the smites. Which someone pointed out rather awesomely, that because it lacks the correct keyword, cannot be chained up the synaptic link bubbles. Anyway, accompanying it into the fray are three Tyrant Guard with adrenal glands, so they can try and keep up and make them a little harder on the hits. Now that I've magnetized them, they have Lash Whips and Bone Cleavers this time and I am trading out the Zoanthropes to switch Massive Mind for Monstrous Muscle, and I'm throwing in my first ever go with the new Screamer Killer Carnifex with Synaptic Enhancement to keep it operational while independent and Adrenal Glands to make it move faster and hit harder. The Ultramarines are changing things up this time by going with Heavy Intercessors. The Gravis Armor gives them plus one toughness and plus one wound, meaning they are three wounds and five toughness. Deja Vu, the exact mirror of my Tyranid Warriors. Looks like we are going on an even footing now. This should make it a solid rumble this time. Agendas, almost the same ones as last time. Assassin for me, the Ultramarines are taking no no fear for experience with every morale check, and I'm going with Sentinel, and they are choosing Survivor because the captain needs to survive to win, so they are going all in. I did the exact same thing when we were playing Slade Warlord. The mission. The Space Marines are dug in at the center of deployment in the ritual site. I am clustered on the other side. Points for objectives and holding more objectives than your opponent. The Primaris Captain gets 10 points every round they are uploading the data, and I get 30 if I stop him. Deployment. We take turns placing an objective marker, 
I am placing mine in my deployment zone because I am going to keep the three warrior squad and the scream killer in the back. It has its own synapse so it can operate on its own when I need it and the adrenal gland should help it get stuck in when I call it forth. The Primaris place one marker forward, so it appears that they are looking to set that one up as a vantage point to one side to hold and also rain down fire on my charging forces. Basically, a midfield bunker to hose my swarm with fire, either as I make the move for the ritual site or to stall me as I stop to take them out before moving on. The other is in the back as something to hold, Probably the captain on the ritual site, number one, and the forces giving him lookout, sir, stretching out a little to maintain unit coherency and also hold objective five as well. The captain is in new swanky armor Indomitus for a two up save and a force field as well for an invuln save. I drop the Carnifex into obscuring to sit and patiently hold the objective. I'm throwing in a lot of stuff as the first wave, and so want to see how it all shakes out before bringing him in. Heavy intercessors with assault weapons take up position in the big ruin near the middle of the board. Yep, as my swarm make for the captain to stop the upload, they'll be shredding them the whole way. And if I pause to take them out, that's more time for the upload to be completed. I drop my three warrior block in the ruins, not in obscuring, I'm going to need that venom cannon throwing out some abuse. If they start taking fire, they'll back up into obscuring while keeping a hoof in the marker. Rapid fire bolt boys in the other ruin and the tyrant guard. I thought about putting them in cover, but they are already slowing up my hive tyrant, so what the hell, let's put them on the very edge of my deployment zone. They are exposed but with toughness 6 and a 2 up save and possibly catalyst, I'm okay with that. Covering distance is my main goal here, get that hive tyrant in so it can start chopping and because of big guns never tire, it can still get out heavy venom cannon shots every turn. As suspected, a large squad of ultramarines stretching from in the backfield ruin onto the objective and to the captain for some cover and objective held and to protect the warlord. Thinning their ranks with venom cannon fire may force some hard choices though. I stationed my main warrior block on the second floor facing the heavy weapons guys, and in the corner behind the tyrant guard are the hive tyrant with the venom throat to the side. Because the space marines only have 4 crusade points because of the big reshuffle, and I have 13 of them, they're going to get a lot of command points to play with. The difference rounded up and halved, so 5 extra command points for the Primaris on top of our usual 6. We roll the same for the roll off, and then we roll again, and it's 5 to a 4. The Tyranids commence the attack. <laughs> I activate Guide Mind for exploding sixes as I am looking for an effective first volley of ranged fire. Because we are so close, no need to advance. I might be able to pull a charge off after just a regular move, especially because I have a plan. With the adrenal glands, they move 7 inches, ending up on the pipe. It's unstable terrain, so I picked a side. The Hive Tyrant strolls in their wake. The Venom Thrope float forward with the Neurothrope in tow to get the benefits of Lookout Sir from its fellow Thropes. Psychic! The Neurothrope hogs Warp Siphon to roll 3d6 and discard one, and has its innate plus one to cast and another plus one from the Resonance Barb. Catalyst on the Tyrant Guard. I pondered paroxysm on the heavies across the board, but I am going to try and charge the guys in the ruin across from me. And so, I want to stop Overwatch and set to defend as well, and get that minus one to wound when they fight back. It is successful! And its third psychic power is Hive Nexus on the Tyrant Guard to sneakily poach a hint of goaded to slaughter synaptic imperative for exploding sixes in melee. The Hive Tyrant drops a couple of smites into the marines for two mortal wounds and it tries it again but fouls. Heavy venom cannon into the ruin, transhuman physiology goes up for two wounding hits, they get plus one saving throw against ranged weapons, one goes through, the four wounds eradicate an intercessor. 
I spend a command point and drop Shard Lure into the Marines, giving everyone who charges that unit 3d6 and discard one. That means the Tyrant Guard and the Hive Tyrant and the Venom Throat all have a better chance of pulling off the charge now, and the target can't overwatch. Damn, I love paroxysm. I roll and I get a six. The command point is regained because of the Neurothrope's tactical experience. From the two-story ruin, Venom Cannon fire out to try and whittle down the captain's protective wall of blue, and the Death Spitters fire into the nearby two-story ruin. Six Venom Cannon shots, exploding sixes, re-rolling ones, two up to hit. Three ups to wound, re-rolling ones. This results in five wounding hits and a single save. Two Primaras fall to shards of poisonous acidic crystal. The Prime fires his Venom Cannon, which looked like it was going to be complimentary on the Codex leak, and then was confirmed as being a freebie on Battlescribe. Three hits with one exploding six, and then an appalling roll to wound. Only one makes it through, and armor blocks it. Death spitters into the ruin, 11 wounding hits against the new and improved toughness, and the new and improved armor of contempt, and a little more for being in cover. Four go through to remove one fellow and wound another. The bioplasmic cannon on the Carnifex is in range, but he's lurking in obscuring, so that one is for later on. Tyrant Guard, a 12 on the charge. Well, I could go charge the captain, but they use this to wrap up on the side to ensure the Hive Tyrant keeps its bodyguards. The Hive Tyrant just makes it to the wall. Thank you, Shard Lure. And the Venomthrope, who fly so the difficult ground presented by the pipe doesn't slow them up, they get an 11 and swarm up on the other side of the building. So if the occupants are taken out, they have a clear run at the backfield objective. Tyrant Guard. Plus one attack for being within three inches of the Hive Tyrant. They have exploding sixes from goaded to slaughter and re-rolling ones from their lash whips. And all of those re-rolls came out as ones again. But at least there's the Leviathan re-roll on the two I got. Because of the armor, I'm going with Rending Claws for minus four AP. Transhuman is up, five wounding hits, sixes to save and no saves. One kill and one wounded. The monstrous bone sword on the Hive Tyrant. Strength 10 versus toughness 5, but transhuman is up for four up to wound. Three wounding hits, it takes out the wounded marine and another, and this robs the venom throat of anything within engagement, meaning they now have a choice of attacking or making a run for the objective. The Marines pile in, we're in the fight phase, so Toxic Miasma does a mortal wound on the unit. Because they were charged, they get an extra attack. Two ups to hit, strength four against toughness six, but that dense Tyrant Guard armor blocks it all. The Marines pile into my Venom Throats and do a wound. Marine morale checks earn a bunch of experience points. The time for battle is now. They do their ultramarine thing of fall back and shoot, but first one tosses in a grenade and does a wound on the venom throat. Heavy storm bolters, four wounding hits at AP minus one, two damage each, a venom throat goes down. Assault weapons open up trying to get through that minus one to hit cloud, five hits, two wounds go through. Four heavy weapons with the captain go for the venom throat, four others go for the tyrant guard, the Venom Throat Cloud serves them well, and they emerge totally unscathed. Executor Heavy Bolters. Three hits on the guard. One wounding hit, a nasty AP minus three, so armor fails, catalyst fails, and three damage goes through. Another shot hits, but armor saves them this time. The captain commits to uploading the data, and this is where we hear him roar into the Vox after opening the operating system to upload the data and finds original Windows XP with no service pack. Are you kidding me? I swear to the Emperor, I'll kill every mechanic I'm responsible for this! More heavy weapons open up, but all fail to wound, which is a serious setback. And I think this is where the battle started to turn. 
Those heavy weapons, even an average roll, would have seriously chewed up my tyrant guard, possibly even opening up the hive tyrant to more of the same a couple of turns earlier than actually happened. The weaker weapons need 5s to wound, AP minus 2, 1 damage inflicted. With Ultramarines, an Intercessor squad can shoot again with the Stratagem Rapid Fire, and so the heavy boys lock and load and go for it again. Two wounding hits on the Tyrant Guard. Catalyst fails, three damage each, leaving me with a lone Tyrant Guard. Four regular shots, but nothing gets through. Yep, if that first volley hadn't been so bad, the Tyrant Guard would be gone now. The Captain's Protection, roll an 11 to charge, and thunder across the field of battle to encircle my last Tyrant Guard. The Captain is now exposed. He may well be in swanky, dense armor, but he is still exposed. I know I used this dodgeball clip last time, but it's just too appropriate. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Four wounding hits, all are saved by that lovely thick chitin armor plating. It retaliates, four attacks with exploding sixes, three hits, two of them wound with AP minus four. So only sixes to save, damage is sustained. <laughs> This looks to be a melee heavy round, so the synaptic imperative goaded to slaughter is activated for exploding sixes in melee for everything within synaptic link range. Okay, I took a quick measurement because maybe using the stratagem encircled the prey, pulled the venom ropes, and then dropped them on the rear objective, but I can't get the nine inches away from enemy just yet without going off the board, so never mind. The Hive Tyrant moves, slipping through the gap because you can pass through engagement range, it doesn't stall you like a brick wall, you just can't end in it. And the big bug ends nice and in the open, but within good charge range. The Venomthropes also move into charge range. The Neurothrope moves forward to get things in range of its psychic powers, or at least to chain things up to the Hive Tyrant. The Tyranid Warriors are going to waste five inches of movement getting down from their perch, Man, I'm thinking of maybe adding flesh hooks. Just five points to ignore all vertical distance. Organic psycho grappling hooks. So I go for an advance and roll a one. Weak. They barely get to the pipe. Was kind of hoping to cover more ground than that, but hey, they have some cover and they are still getting ready to move in and storm that two-story ruin, get those bone swords to work. Actually, from me forgetting fleet footed, it's probably best this way. A couple more inches and they are open to fire. My forgetfulness gives me a plus one armor save. The Tyrant Guard is rather wounded, so Catalyst is going on the Hive Tyrant. Paroxysm on the guys facing the Tyrant Guard, just to see if I can keep him standing around a little longer. Plus also, the Hive Tyrant is about to charge them and I don't want to get overwatched, but it doesn't succeed. Hive Nexus, 3d6 to cast and discard one, and they are all ones. Perils guaranteed and unavoidable. The Neurothrope takes two mortal wounds. You cannot attempt to manifest the same power twice in the same round, even with a different Psyker, so no Hive Nexus. Okay, into the dregs. The Tyrant drops smites at the Captain. The first goes off, the second is cast, and a one, and a two. Phew but one mortal wound is better than nothing, I guess, although barely. That was an awful psychic phase. Two Venom Cannon on the Captain, who activates transhuman physiology. Two sixes for six hits. Five wounding hits against an invuln of three. Two go through, doing four wounds. The Venom Cannon in the building takes a shot, one shot misses. The Venom Cannon in the building takes a shot, one shot, and misses it. The Tyranid Prime fires two shots from its Venom Cannon, two hits, another pair of ones. Okay, I don't mind seeing these snake eyes here, just don't do that in the psychic phase, okay? Death Spitters into the building, minus one to hit from advancing, plus one for direct guidance, ten wounding hits, five get through the armor, extracting two occupants from the ruin. The Hive Tyrant brings his heavy Venom Cannon to bear on that exposed captain, currently yelling at the status bar as the percent complete inches ever closer to completion. Come on. Oh. 
Oh, for crap. He's not infantry, so he doesn't need to brace with his heavy weapon. So even though he moved, he can still blast away with alacrity without the minus one to hit. Three shots, two hits, Transhuman is still up, only one wounding hit, and the Invuln blocks it. The Hive Tyrant and the Venom Throat charge in. Monstrous Bone Sword. Five attacks, but first a command point. He has the keyword Horned Chitin, and so Trampling Charge. Three mortal wounds inflicted on the unit. Now the attacks, another bunch of ones. Sigh. Three wounding hits, the AP negates all chance of a save, and two guys are chopped apart, and by pulling them from the front, it leaves me out of engagement range, so I guess the last of vicious swipe just coasts through thin air. And another command point on the Venom Throat for rapid regeneration, getting one wound back. Six hits, but only two wounding hits. Oops, wait, no. Toxic Lashes. Two up, wound rolls succeed. So five of them succeed, doing a wound, and the Nasty Cloud does two additional mortal wounds. The Marines fighting the Tyrant Guard are within the Captain's reroll range, but fail to wound. The Guard retaliates, gets four wounding hits, felling a Space Marine, and wounding another. The Chapter calls, and we answer. They do their thing and fall back. I forget grasping tendrils on the Venom Throat to entangle the Marines currently in hand-to-hand -hand combat with them. Anyways, they recapture the objective and get the captain back into Lookout Sir. The damage sustained from the Venom Cannon has softened him up a little, so now both he and the mission are in jeopardy. We've both been scoring the same for objectives each round, but the captain has been scoring an extra 10 for the upload, so they are inching ahead quite quickly. The Primaris get three wounding hits on my Venom Throats, two damage each, killing one and wounding another. Regular shots score a wound. Executor Bolter fails to wound the Venom Throat, the Heavy Bolter gets a hit, wounds, and that is my floating stinky guys gone. I really must remember those grasping tendrils. It was only a 50-50 chance, but if I had snagged them, they wouldn't have been able to fall back, and so all of that heavy fire wouldn't have been able to have been used because friendlies would have been engaged. This is why it's fun putting these videos together. I spot these things and can now try and make sure I don't forget them next time. Anyways, always something new to learn or explore in 40k, which is why I find it so much fun. The others open up on my Tyranid Warriors. A Heavy Bolter gets a wounding hit, and the two damage removes a warrior because the damage doesn't carry over, so it just kills the wounded one. Six Marines in the ruins start blasting at the Warriors. Five wounding hits at AP minus two, so I need fives to save, and nothing. Two Warriors are cast to the ground. Two command points, and the Marines shoot again. How come I lose single-minded annihilation, but the Space Marines get to keep theirs? That's a tad unfair. Mind you, so was me using it for six Hive Guard to keep raining down lethal artillery barrages while lurking and obscuring, so I guess this is just karma. The Heavy Bolters get two wounding hits, taking out another warrior. Six more wounding hits at AP minus two. The pipe gives me a point of protection, and four hits go through killing another warrior and wounding another. Damn, they chopped up that unit rather efficiently. I need to be more cautious around these guys in the future. Maybe focus on advancing quickly as they are distracted by the Hive Tyrant, its guard and the Venom Throat Swarm. The Marines hold off on charging. After the disastrous psychic phase last round, Setting off the Neurothrope's synaptic imperative of psychic augmentation, giving all my psychers plus one to cast. 3d6 plus three, discarding one. Catalyst on my prime to try and keep it around now that it's lost lookout, sir. Hive Nexus and goaded to slaughter on my Hive Tyrant, and Paroxysm on the guys in the two-story ruin, because I'm going to charge in there with my Hive Tyrant to try and stop this heavy weapon output that's costing me greatly. And just as I say this, I am now going to repeatedly punch myself in the face. Because 
I should have remembered reinforced hive node against those heavy bolters to reduce damage by one to a minimum of one. That would have totally defanged those dual barrages. Sigh, never mind, let's try and recall that for next time. Again, it's a whole new ultramarine lineup. I'm learning what they can do, so now I can learn what to do to stop them. The Tyrant throws a couple of smites at the Captain, the first does a mortal wound, the second fails to go off. The Venom Cannon once again try to get rid of that Space Marine Cloud blocking access to the Captain, but only take out two Astartes. The Death Spitters get into the Ruin doing some damage, but more importantly getting a Shard Lure into them to assist my Hive Tyrant in charging. The Hive Tyrant rolls a 1 and a 2 and a six. Phew. Okay. Oh, boys! I'm back! Or maybe it's a case of... You didn't invite me, so I crashed! Anyways, he rushes into the building. The tyrant guard gives it some Leroy Jenkins. The captain jumps out to do a heroic intervention with the intention of moving back onto the objective when the Space Marine turn comes. Oops, forgot to move the warriors out in the open. Everything is in range, so it's no biggie. Let's try and advance. I need anything more than a two to get them into cover onto the objective and thereby free up my Khan effects to come charging out. If I can get a three, they can reach obscuring, and so the unit won't be destroyed and it saves me rolling for battle scars after the fight. God damn it, I roll a one. They are just shy of the building. But you know what? Command point re-roll, and it's a six. The warlord gets into cover and obscuring. He arrives, slaps the Khan effects on the arse, and yells, giddy up. Trampling charge on the hive tyrant, and it gets a two. So it does three mortal wounds, and then the Bone Sword finishes off two more in the building, but by pulling from the front, the remaining attacks slice through naught but air. Tyrant Guard is on three attacks and gets three twos. Everything misses. The Captain puts the Tyrant Guard on one wound, the others fail to do any damage. They all fall back onto the objectives. The ones in the building fire on the Hive Tyrant, four shots, one hit. The penalty for falling back causing an extra miss. No effect. The Heavy Bolter gets a wound in hit, the save fouls and does two damage. The rest of the shooting does nothing against my sturdy Chitin Carapaces. The Marines charge, kill the last Tyrant Guard and don't charge my Hive Tyrant so as to keep that retaliatory strike at bay. He's a rather angry lad after all. The Screamer Killer advances, gets a 4, so with the Adrenal Glands, a 16 inch advance. Which is a botch on my part because he went through two walls that are not breachable to monsters, and I forgot about the pipe as well. Hey, I got overexcited using a new beastie, but it really doesn't change anything. He didn't reach combat, couldn't have charged, and the Marines charged it anyways. So what goes down would have gone down anyway, just over by the pipes instead. Catalyst on the Carnifex, Hive Nexus goaded to slaughter on it as well to try and enhance those 10 attacks, and Paroxysm on the guys about to charge it to lower their chances of wounding just a little. Rapid regeneration on my Hive Tyrant, and it's back to full. The Hive Tyrant goes for the smites. If I don't kill the captain this round, it's likely the 10 extra points they've been earning every turn will take them too far out of range for my 30 points for killing him to catch me up. Both go off, a total of 5 mortal wounds, and the captain goes down. The upload is stopped. The Screamer Killer, I get to use Bioplasmic Scream for the first time ever. Two shots, both hit, and it does a wound. Lots of screaming, not much killing. The Hive Tyrant isn't in combat with the unit, so he starts blasting, taking out two marines. I still have the three warrior squad operational, a venom cannon into a four man unit, so no blast. Two hits, one goes through, the wounded marine is taken down. Two death spitters into the ruin, four hits, but none of them wound. The Hive Tyrant charges and demolishes the last of the Space Marines in the building. With the Captain dead, they move forward and just unload everything at the Neurothrope. 
shredding my poor floaty brain bug. Then they just go for it and charge the Carnifex, doing a couple of wounds, and then the Screamer Killer Talons carve the last of the Ultramarines into bite-sized chunks. With the objectives largely mine, the Warlord slain, the Marines were 10 points ahead at the end of last round, but I snag a massive 50 points in battle round 5, taking it to 90 versus 50. The Captain gets a battle scar, loss of reputation. My Tyrant Guard get fatigued and lose objective secure. I'll be spending a requisition point to shed that one. The Feeble Psychic cost me. Keeping the Carnifex in reserve worked a treat. If the battle had been going worse, I think slamming in that hammer might have evened things out a bit. The earlier failure of the Space Marines' heavy weapons to execute the Tyrant Guard was a definite hurdle. But then, so too was me forgetting Reinforced Hive Node to knock one damage off of those two and three damage attacks. If I had to pick a swing point, it was that moment the Venom Cannon got some wounds on the Captain. It left him just weak enough for the Smites to assassinate him, even once he was back in Lookout Sir. Paroxysm is great, but the minus one to wound is nothing compared to blocking Overwatch and set to defend. The Heavy Intercessors are now basically on par with Tyranid Warriors, so at the end of the battle, other than a few Warrior Scraps, only the Carnifex and Hive Tyrant were left on the battlefield. It was quite the slaughter fest. Okay, the Primaries failed to transmit the information, but they still have the actual data slates. So now comes the final push to get them off-world by hand and out of the system as Octarius continues to fall to the Great Devourer. Alien shrieks rise and fall amidst the clang of chitin against metal and the shrill crackle of electrical discharge as power nodes are torn asunder. Then comes a long melancholy groan prior to a ground shuddering impact as the antenna towers topple and fall like skeletal trees of steel into the sands of Aldara's haven. The heavy intercessors continue to beat a hasty retreat, exploiting the Tyranid's focus on destroying the comms array to make it to the extraction site, where Thunderhawk gunships await with weapons trained to cut down any pursuing Xenos. The long, high-pitched wail of the Tyranid Prime reaches the ears of Captain Casper, and he grits his teeth in rage. He knows that the aliens are not capable of such emotions, but to him, it is a sound of victory, of contempt, of mocking. He can see that his men are visibly affected by it, and they throw him a furtive glance. The relentless onslaught of the seemingly infinite Tyranids has caused a doubt in his command. Nothing that would ever ferment into disobedience, but the inspiration he once offered his battle brothers is now tainted from defeat. He swears at that moment that there will be no more failures. Limping up the embarkation ramp, the captain slumps down as apothecaries move in. The Thunderhawk's engines roar into life and they begin a frantic dash into the void. The skill of the pilots are tested greatly as hive vessels ebb and flow in great clouds, harassing the fleet as titanic bio-vessels begin to emerge from behind the planet. The Thunderhawks sustain strike upon strike, throwing equipment around the cabin as sparks fly and plumes of smoke roll from the inner hull. At times, the ship seems ready to just tumble apart into fragments, so punishing is the abuse being levied against it. Casper holds the data slates tight. If they perish now, the crusade is at an end. Suddenly, they are decelerating, and docking limbs cradle the wounded vessel and lower it to the deck. As the engines power down, rattling and sputtering from the exertions that brought them to the point of detonation, the mighty engines of the strike cruiser Vengeance of McCrag take up a far more forceful chorus. The superstructure trembles as void shields continue to absorb punishment from the rampaging Tyranid space swarms, and as they leave the gravity well of Eldara's haven, the rituals of translation begin. Captain Casper walks awkwardly from the Thunderhawk and sees viewports closing as the Gellerfields power up. He catches a glimpse of Eldara's haven and curses the place. So much pain, so much loss, so many frustrations. The world is a fitting tombstone to mark the fall of Octarius, 
a symbol of everything that was underestimated about the foul Tyranids. They swarmed them, evolved before their eyes, adapted even as they were in battle. More than ever, there is the need for a rallying symbol to help inspire the Imperium, or at the very least the Ultramarines to new and potent heights of fanatic commitment to the eternal fray. And then the view is gone, and a moment later, so too is the vengeance of McCrag, as it rips an untidy hole out of the material universe and it slides into the raging inferno of the Immaterium. Several days pass as the strike cruiser journeys towards the chapter world, and it is during this time that the data tablets bearing the science team scans of the tablets are scrutinized, analyzed, and translated. A tech marine enters the quarters of Captain Casper. The interior is gloomy and quiet, the atmosphere pensive. The officer is sat on the edge of his bunk. Slim trowels of incense rise up around his massive form from two ornate holders on the floor. The incandescent glow from the tips of the perfume sticks is virtually the only illumination in the room. He is informed that the location of Rapture's Gate has been discovered. The banner bequeathed to Gilliman himself by the Emperor, beloved by all, is within their reach. Caspeth barely reacts, sullen and brooding. He remains silent and rubs his aching leg, the wound there still untreated. The medical procedures to undo the terrible damage he sustained were dismissed. The pain is constant and it keeps his hate for the Tyranids vibrant and keen. Every twinge of discomfort makes his sword arm seek retribution. Every flare of anguish from a bold stride tightens his tendons and makes him yearn to carve into Zeno's flesh with his bare hands. The tech marine asks him if he heard the news, confused at the lack of reaction to such a glorious breakthrough. Caspeth continues to stare into the shadows and without breaking his fixated and sanguinary glare, he merely mutters, set course, ready to mend. The tech marine salutes and departs, glad to be out of such an aura of saturnine gloom and enraged purpose. Caspeth extinguishes the incense sticks with a pinch. The banner is within his grasp. After so many setbacks, surely the crusade cannot end with such an anti-climax. To just open some box and hoist it free, to return home victorious to jubilant cheers and congratulations, commendations and welcoming battle brothers, it feels implausible, it feels fraudulent, and besides, his dream for the recovery of Rapture's Gate was to remove it from the clutches of that Tyranid Prime as the sickly alien glow dulls and fades from its eyes, his blade jutting from its chest, its body racked by bolt of fire. But victory is victory. The crusade was to recover the banner, not pander to one man's thirst for vengeance. Meanwhile, in the hangar, Engineers continue to work long and arduous shifts, trying to repair the near catastrophic damage sustained by the Thunderhawks that evacuated the Primaris. Even now, after days of toil, the work crews cannot fathom how these craft even made it out of the atmosphere, let alone to the strike cruiser. Showers of sparks cascade and dance upon the deck as new plates are welded into position. The bright plumes are dazzling and painful to the eye. The protective goggles, worn by the team, cause a soft, rhythmic glow to go unnoticed. It emanates from a small circular penetration under the wing. An oval of fresh ablative ceramite armor is hurriedly slammed to this breach and quickly welded into place. Inside, unnoticed and now in darkness, the single shard lure continues to emit its synaptic pulse. The conductive chitin thorn reaches out into the immaterium and brushes against the shadow in the warp. As the vengeance of McCrag translates back into real space, Tyranid scout forces, already in the sector, are alerted to the cry of the Shard Lure as the hive mind magnifies it by many orders of magnitude. The tiny voice wedged in the gunship is now a rallying bellow to all bioforms. The Great Devourer compels them to act with immediate haste and unthinking purpose. Follow the signal capture whatever the Astartes seek and consume their biomass to the very last cell. The crusade culminates. <laughs>